This demo is just to give you a sense of what Lambda is and how you might use it. This is really early stages. It only just got announced that Lambda was now available in the current channel versions of Excel. So go to File, Account, and then check what channel you're on. And if you're on the current channel, then click Update and you should have it. Keep refreshing, maybe close down Excel a few times, reopen it, it should show up, okay? As of recording, February the 11th, 2022. This is a video that you need to have a look in the description notes below to check for any updates I've posted or any new videos I'm suggesting you link to because things will change. This is new. Okay, I'm gonna show you an example. This example you could actually do without lambdas, but it gives you a good sense. It's not over complicating things. I wanna keep it simple just to introduce these new concepts and the advanced formula editor environment window. Okay, it's awesome. Let's go. Let me show you the end result. Equals. I've written a, for a lambda, which is basically a function that can take parameters and do really clever calculations, but can do basic ones as well. It's a named, named formula, and you put parameters into it. So I want to put in this text to look for, click on that, select range to look in, click on this, press enter, and it now gives me a filtered list containing the word apple, or if I put Mac, or if I put ban. So this formula is relatively straightforward to write anyway. You could do it without a lambda potentially, but this is just showing you the concepts and introducing some new features. And one of the things you need is this advanced formula environment, which really makes it much simpler to write lambdas. To get this button, you need to go to insert, get add-ins, okay, and then search for formula. And the advanced formula environment is there, go add, and it will show up on your home tab if it doesn't pop up automatically. Okay, this one, we'll come back to it. So how do you approach a lambda? Well, it depends on how advanced you are with your formulas and understanding. I, I probably start off just building some formulas in Excel and then porting them over or, or redoing them then in lambdas. Let me show you what I mean. I like to break down things into, into various elements. So to do my um, search and filter for this, I need to firstly flag, let me change this back to Apple, for example. I want to flag which ones of these words contain apple. So equals search, that's a um, non-case sensitive search. If you want case sensitivity, you can use find. Okay, non-case sensitive. So find this, okay, comma, within this list. Enter. Whenever it finds something, there's a one or the number, the text point that it starts, so character number five, for example. All I care about is that it's found a number. So you can wrap this inside an is number function, is number. Okay, so none of this involving lambda yet. I'm just showing you my logic about what I want to turn into a nice simple function for, for me to use or anybody else. So trues and falses. And then you can simply filter, okay, this list based on the corresponding list here. It'll only bring back the trues. B1 hash means it's referring to the array. Okay, enter. Awesome. And But if I don't have any matches, let's say I put caret in here. I don't want this calc error. So there's an optional part of filter, comma, if empty. Uh, let's put no match. Is. Okay, so let's put apple back in there. And what you could do if you were being fancy, let me just, you know, let me just take this formula here and put it in here. I'll just replace the B1 hash with the formula I've written there. Let me copy this formula out, put it there, go in here, paste. So I've made a mega formula sort of thing. It works, right? And that's fine. You know, you don't need lambda to do that function. However, 
Lambda can do stuff that normal functions can't, but that's a topic for a whole other time. I want to just show you the concept of Lambda. I want to simplify this for the end user by giving it a name and using the advanced editor to show you and breaking it down into component parts just to give you a starting point. Okay. Right, so let's open up the advanced editor and turn this into a named formula, a Lambda function. So advanced environment. Okay, I've actually got one in here already that gets listed. You can filter for all the ones you've written. Um, I'm just going to go into the editor to write a new one. So editor, scroll down, window, uh, sorry, control shift plus zooms in. And the great thing is this window is detachable. Okay, you can drag it, you can even put it on a different screen, which is awesome. Okay, so here we go, uh, control shift plus just to zoom in. So it, I'm just going to start writing, replicate that function I've already built, but let's do it from scratch. So um, let's call it demo filtered list. That's going to be the name of my formula. Equals. Right. Let me do zoom in a little bit more so it's a bit bigger. So demo filtered list. So we start off with lambda. Open the brackets. I'm just going to get rid of that closed brackets. You get lots of red underscores when you're building the formula. I don't like that, but it is what it is. Okay, so first of all, you say, right, I want a couple of parameters to put into my function. So I want to be able to pick the cell with the word apple in and the list. So let's call it, I don't know, cell to pick. You can think about these names that make sense to the end user. That's the first bit. Shift enter to start a new line. Okay, uh, list to search. That could be the other parameter name. Give it some sensible names. So then what I want to do is say, okay, recreate basically these elements. So if I go in here, this is number search. I actually, I'm going to use let to help me name that little bit of the, the formula to give me that sort of column. And again, this is probably overkill for this exact example, but I'm just teaching you a few principles. So the let function allows you to sort of name and reuse variables. So let, let's call this um, my um, flag matches, okay? And it's actually this, is number search. So that's my flag matches, okay, comma. Then I wanna be able to filter the range. So if I go back here, okay, to this, this is gonna be my result. Okay, so paste, put a bracket on the end for the let. See how the brackets light up? That's quite a nice little feature. Put a bracket on the end, that shows the lambda. Oh, that should be filter, not filter. And look, this is the bit you replace. This D1 is actually gonna be the cell to pick. So cell to pick, IntelliSense kicks in, which is great. And again, I'm gonna use shift enter just to break this up and just be able to see it on different lines. Um, the range A1 to A7 is actually the list to search. Beautiful. And again, in here, this is the list to search. And B1 hash is actually my flag matches item. Flag matches. And there I've done it. Okay, I've now got my lambda. Let me make this wider so we can actually see it properly. Annoyingly, it resizes, control shift plus a few times. Um, and you can format your code a bit better. I really recommend doing the double slash to add some comments, maybe some dots, because you can separate these functions out. When a function is done with, put a semicolon. Okay, so I really should do that straight away, semicolon. Okay, it means you can now write another one underneath. So try and do this, try and line up the code as well with commas and stuff, uh, with the brackets. Okay, so what you do then is click this sync, which saves this function into your named ranges. So click on that, it saves it into the name manager. And if I go to formulas name manager, you'll see that demo filtered list is there. And there's the lambda, okay? But 
much easier editing this than going into that named box and trying to change it there. Horrible. Um, I wouldn't even try doing that. So this is great. So let's try it out. We go, it's called de equals demo filtered list. Brilliant. It's asking for the cell to pick, comma, and the list to search. Enter. Beautiful. It's working. Okay. I type ban in there or I type Mac. Awesome. Okay. So the formula is complicated, but the use of it is now simplified. And Lambdas can do all sorts of crazy stuff, all right? There'd be loads of good content rapidly being released by all, you know, people on YouTube and bloggers and everybody, okay? Lots of good content out there. Right. So that's the core concept of it. A couple of other little features. You can actually then save these formulas, these Lambdas that you're doing. You can save them into a GitHub repository. Again, I knew nothing about GitHub until a day ago. I set up this gist, it's called, in about five minutes. And what it means is that you can save the code, the text, there, and then you can simply import, okay? So you go, sorry, you go click on this download, this import button, put the URL in, and all your formulas come in. You can share that link with somebody, you can make it public. I'll put a link for my gist in the show notes, okay, so you can import the ones that I've been playing about with. Let me show you really quickly, okay, so if I bring this up, if you go here to gist.github.com and sign in or sign up, go in with your Microsoft account or whatever, you know, you can sign up, it's free. Um, then, let me show you my one, I'm in here, you can create or paste in, there's a little plus button, create new gist, okay, you can create one, you can paste it in, and then it gives you this URL, okay? You can make it secret or you can make it public, either way. I'll put this link in the show notes, all right? Honestly, read the instructions for five minutes. It took me five minutes yesterday to set up. It's not complicated. So there we go, all right? We've got that in there, which is great. Um, I can then go and import it, use it in another file, or you can simply copy and paste these functions across into different files, which is awesome. So there you go, that's a brief introduction about how you set this up. Let me know what you think, leave it in the comments, tell me what your feedback is, what's your thoughts. You know, there's all ways of exploring it. I'll put a few links to, you know, more resources underneath in the, in the show notes. Um, it's exciting. I'm looking forward to playing with this stuff and building up some useful functions that people can use. All right, catch you later.